Well, hello there. Good to see you in the house of the Lord, even though I can't see you. You can see me though. And I can tell you that the Lord is here. The Lord's there where you're at and there's no distance in the spirit. So we're just going to have a special time as we look into the perfect law of liberty, into the word of God and let him speak to our hearts and change our lives like he always wants to. Let's pray. Father, we're so grateful. Thank you for another opportunity to just come together in spirit and to worship you around the word. Lord, we are so grateful for the word. Thank you, Lord, that you sent your word and healed us and delivered us from our destructions. Thank you that it's right, it's pure. Your word is holy, it's spirit. It's everything that we need. And Lord, it, it brings to us knowledge of everything we need to know. Lord, I just thank you that you have sent your word to us. And Lord, it is our roadmap to life both now and forever. Tonight, we look into it very humbly. We receive it with meekness and we believe that it speaks to our hearts and changes our lives in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I want to continue on a subject uh, that I was bringing to you the last time and it's the purging of the Passover. Uh, Passover, the, the week of Passover is just about over now, but I want to uh, continue on and share with you just a little bit more about this. I was talking, as I said, about the purging of the Passover. You know, during this time of COVID-19, all this that's been going on, we have really, really, really um, focused on Passover, the original Passover back in Exodus chapter 12. But we've really focused mostly on the power and on the protection of Passover. And the Lord has put it in my heart. He said, there's more to it than just the power and the protection, there's also a purging that takes place in the Passover. And I want to look at that for in this message. I want to take just a few more minutes. I know I've already preached one whole message on this, and uh, but I want I, there's just some more of it that we need to look at. And I want the I want the Lord to really speak to our hearts and change our lives through this. Um, if you are reading there in Exodus chapter 12. Uh, verses 1 through 14 is talking about the power and the protection of the Passover. But then when you get to verse 15 and you go down through um, verse 20, before it starts back talking about the power and the, and the protection there in uh, verse 21, during those few verses, though, between 15 and 20, it's talking about unleavened bread. And it's talking about uh, leaven and how that there can't be any leaven. And we, anyway, we read some scriptures. I want to go back and read one of them. Um, let's see here. It's the one where it talks about how that Jesus became the, the sacrificial lamb. Lord, where is it here? It says in uh, 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 5, verses 6 and 8. No, uh, verses 6 through 8. Your glory is not good. Know ye not that a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. We can't afford to have any leaven. Leaven symbolizes sin. And we were talking about the scripture there in 2 Chronicles 7, 14. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Forgive their sin. My people. He's talking about his people. He's not talking about the people of the world. He says, if my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves, humble themselves. You know, when we humble ourselves, we don't look at ourselves as so um, upright and self-righteous and all this kind of stuff in, in our ability to do so. We look at ourselves, uh, when we humble ourselves, we'll see that the only righteousness we have is the righteousness of God because we've accepted that righteousness when we accepted Jesus as our Lord and Savior. But the thing about it is, so many people have allowed themselves, and we all have, we've allowed ourselves to get back into things and get the wrong attitudes and the wrong motives and get outside of the boundaries of love and, and just get back in the flesh and allow certain things to take over. And, and before long, if you don't watch it, uh, you'll get used to it and it'll become a part of you to the point that you don't even recognize it's there, but it's still what it is. It's still sin. If they'll turn from their wicked ways, if they'll get this leaven out of their lives, so he said, your glory is not good. Know ye not that a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. So he said, purge out therefore the old leaven. Get rid of it, that you may be a new lump as ye are unleavened. For even Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. This is talking about 
Passover and it's bringing it over into the New Testament. And it's not talking about the power and the protection of the Passover here. But thank God, if we get the leaven out, the power and the protection will definitely be there. So he said, therefore, let us keep the feast, not with old leaven. Don't put up with the sin that's in your life. Get it out. Neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Now I'm going to move on down to where I left off in the last message. Um, we were reading scriptures about examining ourselves and searching ourselves. And, but I want to get to another scripture where it's inviting God to turn the searchlight on and show us if there's anything in our lives that doesn't need to be there. So if you'll look with me in Psalm 139, verses 23 and 24, Psalm 139, verses 23, 24, and I am reading from the Amplified Version of the Bible. It says, search me thoroughly, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. My heart and my thoughts. They both matter. And see if there's any wicked or hurtful way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. Lead me out of this and lead me in the way everlasting. The new living says, search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. Point out anything in me that offends you and lead me along the path of everlasting life. Man, Point out anything in me that offends you, God. If it's not right, I want to know it. I want you to show it to me. I want you to bring it right out in the open so I can confess it to you as sin, so that I can be honest with myself and with you and everyone else. Lord, I want to get it out once and for all. This is a time of purging. There's a purging of the Passover. We don't need to just be looking at the power and, and just be looking at the uh, the protection of the Passover. Lord, I want to be purged through the blood of the Passover lamb. It's the blood of Jesus Christ that washes away our sins. In Psalm 26 and 2, it says, Examine me, O Lord, and prove me. Try my reins and my heart. The Living Bible says, Cross-examine me, O Lord, and see that this is so. Test my motives and my affections too. My affections. Am I doing what I do because of love? The greatest of all the affections. My motives. Why am I doing what I'm doing? Is, am I doing it to be seen? Am I, am I doing it to get the glory from man? Or am I doing it to give glory to you? Why am I doing it? Test my motives and test my affections. The New Living says, put me on trial, Lord. And cross-examine me. Test my motives and my heart. God's not looking at all this stuff that everybody else sees. We, we can put on a front to other people. We can be someone when we come to church, a certain person. And then whenever we go home or get out of away from the church, we're somebody else. No, we're supposed to be Christ-like. We're supposed to be a Christian all the time. I'm supposed to be who I am in Him everywhere I'm at. Without, without any, I mean, they're always, I mean, no matter if no one else is looking, God is looking. He's still there. I'm still there. Lord, look at my heart. Look at the depth of my heart. Is it right? If it's not right, show me. Show me the things that needs to change. Um, glory to God. Test my heart. Uh, and, and the Amplified says, test my heart and my mind. Lord, are my thoughts right? If my thoughts are not right, Lord, show me where they're wrong and help me to think right. I want to be thinking right. The message says, examine me, God, from head to toe. Order your battery of tests. Make sure I'm fit inside and out. Wow. In Psalm 51, verses 10 through 13, in the King James, it says, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. I want a right spirit. I don't want to be fake. I don't want to be counterfeit. I don't want to wind up as a castaway. No, I want to be real. It says, cast me not away from thy presence 
and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of my salvation. And there's no greater joy in your salvation than having a pure heart in your salvation. And uphold me with thy free spirit. Then will I teach transgressors thy ways and sinners shall be converted into thee. That's what God wants out of us. He wants us to be turning other people to him. But you know, we don't do a very good job turning other people to him when we need to turn to him ourselves and get the things out that shouldn't be there so that we can better serve him and be fit for the master's use. In Ezekiel chapter 36, verses 25 through 28, and I'm reading from the message, it says, I'll pour pure water over you and scrub you clean. That's what I want God to do. Pour pure water over me and scrub me clean. He said, I'll give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. I'll remove the stone heart from your body and replace it with a heart that's God willed and not self willed. God willed, not self willed. I'll put my spirit in you and make it possible for you to do what I tell you and live by my commands. In verse 28, it says, you'll once again live in the land I gave your ancestors. You'll be my people and I'll be your God. That's the way it is. I want to walk with my father God hand in hand all the days of my life, serving him as well as I possibly can with a right heart, the right motives, the right affections, the right everything. Thank you, Lord. In Isaiah 1, beginning with verse 16 in the message, it says, go home and wash up. Clean up your act. Sweep your lives clean of your evil doing so I can, so I don't have to look at them any longer. Say no to wrong. Learn to do good. Work for justice. Help the down and out. Stand up for the homeless. Go to bat for the defenseless. Come, sit down. Let's argue this out. Now, I, I do believe that God is willing to stoop down to our level and just let us pour out our hearts to him sometime. Sometimes, I mean, that's just being honest. That's just being open with God. That's not trying to cover up anything that we can't cover up anyway. God sees our hearts anyway. So sometimes we just need to sit down and pour our heart out to God. Lord, this is, I see this is why I'm the way I am. And Lord, but I see also that it's not right. And I want you to get it out of me. Lord, I want to be pleasing to you. I want to be a vessel fit for you to use. I want to be everything I can be for you. So Lord, purge me, purge me, make me clean. I repent, Lord. This is God's message. If your sins are blood red, they'll be snow white. If they're red like crimson, they'll be like wool. If you'll willingly obey, you'll feast like kings. But if you're willful and stubborn, you'll die like dogs. That's right. God says so. Now I want you to understand purging, you know, to the flesh, it can seem painful, but really and truly purging is a good thing. It's a good thing. It's a good thing. It's a very good thing. It sets us in right standing for God's best. It places us right where we need to be in the center of God's will. Purging is a good thing. Don't we want to be more pleasing to God and more fit for his use? I do. I do. There's so many things that I've wanted God to do through me. And I believe that if I come to him with a pure heart, I believe that if I take advantage of this time right now during all this isolation, I believe that God will do a work in me and purify me to the point that he can use me like he's never been able to use me before and like I have so desired for him to use me and like he has planned to use me. And I know that that must be the way that you feel. Don't we want him to change us and make us more like him? There are probably some things about all of us that we really need to be purged from so God can and so that he will really use us. We need to be honest and say, I've read this list in the last message, but I want to read it again. Father, when we, when we, get, when we all come back together, Lord, may all the jealousy and competitiveness and divisiveness and strife and selfishness and pride and offense and bitterness and resentment and hatred and rebellion and lust and perversion and filthiness and spite and ill will and hurt feelings and childishness and desire to be in control, self-promotion, self-exaltation, fretfulness, carnality, devilishness, laziness, unwillingness, 
fear, doubt, worry. May all of this be completely washed away out of our hearts and our lives so that we may be, uh, so, that, so that you can be here among us like never before and so that you can do in us what you've always wanted to do like never before and so that we can see things that you do that we've never seen you do before. Miracles, signs and wonders, oh my Lord, healings, people running to Jesus to accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Lord, get all this stuff out of us so that we can be all and see all that we're supposed to see you do through us before we're out of here. Glory to God. Ephesians chapter four, verses 22 through 24 in the King James, it says that you put off concerning the former conversation, the old man, which is corrupt according to deceitful lust. Lust to sin, they're deceitful. They can seem so right to the flesh, but they're so wrong. And, and what happens when a person's deceived is they're lying to themselves and believing the lie. It's okay. No, it's not okay. It's not okay. God, get it out. Examine yourself. See how you're in the faith. Get it out. Become clean. Allow me to purge you. It says, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind and that you put on the new man which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. The new living says, beginning in verse 21, since you've heard about Jesus and have learned the truth that comes from him, throw off your old sinful nature and your former way of life, which is corrupted by lust and deception. Instead, let the spirit renew your thoughts and attitudes. Put on your new nature created to be like God, truly righteous and holy. Glory to God. Psalm 79 and 9 in the King James says, Help us, O God, of our salvation for the glory of thy name and deliver us. Purge away our sins for sake or for thy name's sake. Purge away our sins. 1 Corinthians 5, 6 through 7 in the King James says, Your glory is not good. Know ye not, I've already read this one, but I want to read it again. Know ye not that a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. Purge out, therefore, the old leaven, that you may be a new lump. Yes, glory. James 4, 8 through 10. I know I'm reading a lot of scriptures here, but I always do. Uh, thank God for the word of God. It's, it's the word that makes us free. It says in, in James 4 and 8, it says, draw nigh to God and he'll draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. Don't be this today and something else tomorrow. Don't be up as a Christian today and down tomorrow. It says, be afflicted and mourn and weep. I mean, we need to get serious about this thing. We need to be honest about this thing. Be afflicted and mourn and weep. If I've got to cry it out to God, do it. Let this be a time of purging. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to heaviness. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and he shall lift you up. That's what we've got to do. Just go low in the presence of God and humble ourselves and repent. Ask God to forgive us for these things and purge us and get this stuff out of us. And then he'll lift us up higher than we've ever been before in our lives. Glory to God. Mm, thank you, Jesus. I want to read James 4, 7 through 10 in the message. It says, so let God work his will in you. Yell out a loud no to the devil and watch him scamper. Say a quiet yes to God and he'll be there in no time. Quit dabbling in sin. Purify your inner life. Quit playing the field. Hit bottom and cry your eyes out. The fun and games are over. Get serious, really serious. Get down on your knees before the master. It's the only way you'll get on your feet. How true, how true. Humble yourselves. You see, God, he's against the ones that are prideful. He, 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 he is just, he works against, but he gives grace to the humble. He'll give us the grace to become clean and pure and so that we can be all that we can be by his grace for the rest of our lives while we're here on this earth. Thank you, Lord. We have to humble ourselves and present ourselves to God for the blood of Jesus to cleanse us and make us whiter than snow. In Psalms 51, verse seven, it says, purge me with hyssop and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. If God washes you, if you're washed in the blood of Jesus, not just that first time, you know, thank God for that one time of being saved, coming to know Jesus, being born again. 
But if there's another time that we need to go bathe in the blood of Jesus, then, you know, if we, if we see there's something there and the Lord shows us something that's wrong in our lives, what is it that cleanses us? What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Purge me with hyssop and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Hebrews 9 and 14 says, How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience, your conscience. You know, if he'll purge our conscience, it says from dead works to serve the living God. You know, if our conscience are bothering us, if we know there's something in there that shouldn't be there, we won't be all we can be for God. It's just something there that's holding us back. We don't feel worthy. We feel under condemnation. We feel guilty. Um, and that hinders our faith. It hinders our love walk. It hinders everything. But you know, if we'll do just what it says right here, if, if we'll just allow him to come in and purge us, he will, he will, I'm telling you, he will, he'll just take away all that guilt and shame. We'll be, we'll, we'll feel, we'll feel like because of the blood of Jesus that's washed us clean, that blood has made us worthy to be vessels of honor for his use. Glory to God. How much more shall the blood of Christ who through, through the eternal spirit offer himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works so that we can serve the living God. Our works will mean something. They'll get some things done. I'm telling you, get a lot of things done if we do them with a clean, pure heart. God can use us and he will. And you know, purging is very important too because, you know, there can be some eternal consequences. Uh, you know, I know different people have different opinions about all of this. But one thing, you know, if we do, if we do things for God with the wrong attitude, with the wrong motives, because there's things in our heart right there, we will we'll forfeit all the rewards that he's promised us when we get to heaven. I want to I wanna experience everything God has got for me. You say, well, I just mainly want to get to heaven. Well, yeah, uh, getting to heaven, period is a whole lot better than going to hell. But we have to remember that when we get to heaven, it's eternal. We're there and for people that gave everything that they had while they were here and they poured their whole hearts into it, they did it with the right attitudes, the right motives. They did it pure and clean as they've allowed God to purge them so that he could use them and make them vessels of honor for his use. Man, they're gonna be experiencing so many rewards and you say, well, I don't even know what rewards are. I don't think any of us know exactly what all that's going to mean. But I can tell you if it's something that God offered and he talked about it so much. Jesus said, I'm coming quickly and my reward is with me to, to give to every man according as his work shall be. Not according to what they were, but as they were, as their work shall be. What attitude, what motives I had and what I did. Mm, it matters much. And then, as it says here in Luke 3, 17, whose fan is in his hand and he will thoroughly purge his floor and will gather the wheat into the garner, but the chaff shall be turned, uh, shall burn with fire unquenchable. I certainly don't want to be a counterfeit that can't stand before God, pure and holy, when I, when I do stand before him. I tell you what, I want to wind up in heaven and I want to wind up with the very best of heaven when I get there. I want to have rewards because I did what I did for God with a pure heart. I didn't have all this stuff, uh, all these sins and things that so easily beset us. I don't want to have anything covered up. God sees it all anyway. It's not really covered up to him. And he's the one that matters. And I can tell you, whatever it is, it's not worth holding on to. We're going to stand before God at the judgment seat of Christ one day and be rewarded for the things that we did while we're here according as our works were. What motives? Did I do it with a pure heart? Did I do it with a clean heart? These, that list of things that I named. Did I allow God to purge me and take that sin out, remove it from me? Did I do it? Was I honest with myself? I want to encourage you, don't deceive yourself right now. Be honest, examine yourself. Allow God to turn the searchlight on. 
Allow him to search you and see if there's any impure thing in your heart. I promise you, he said, if we'll confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say we've not sinned, we make him a liar and the truth's not in us. Let's be honest. Let's come clean. Let's let the blood of Jesus wash it all away. As I said, during this Passover, the remainder of it, and it's coming to an end now, um, as far as 2020 is concerned. But thank God, you know, we can go on. We celebrate the Passover lamb every day of our lives. We want to depend. You know, I'm going to continue to take communion after Passover's over. As a matter of fact, I, I take Passover communion every day. I partake of the blood and body of Jesus every day at, at my home. And it, it's a very real thing to me that I'm very serious about every day. And you know what? I apply the blood of Jesus over the doorposts of my home verbally every day. And I, and I just thank God. I plead the blood of Jesus over my family and everything. But you know what? I want to allow the purging to go on too. I don't want to just experience the power or, or believe for the power and the protection. I want to believe for the purging. I want to put myself out there in the open always to God and say, Lord, if you see any unclean, search me, O oh God. And if you see any unclean, clean, impure thing in me, take it away because I want to be a vessel of honor that you can use for the fullness. And I don't want anything to stand in my way. I want you to fully fulfill your purpose for me for the rest of my days while I'm on this earth. Glory to God. Let's pray. Father, we come to you now with very thankful hearts. We thank you for the blood of Jesus Christ that cleanses us from all sins. We thank you that you made us a promise that if we would just be honest and we confess our sins, that you're faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So Lord, in the days ahead, I pray, Lord, that you continue to do a purging work in my life. And I pray that you do it in my brothers and sisters. Lord, help us to be very humble and open with ourselves and open to you so that you can show us those unclean things that are not supposed to be there so that you can wash it away as we confess it as sin by your precious blood. I love you, Lord. Use us for your glory. Do great things, Lord. We come pure and clean before you. Lord, I ask you right now to forgive us for all the ways we failed you. Lord, we have failed you in so many ways. I humbly ask you, Lord, right now, forgive us, Lord. We humble ourselves before you. And we ask you to, Lord, take any wicked ways out of us. We turn from our wicked ways and we turn our hearts to you. And we want to be used for your use for the rest of our days while we're here on this earth. And we do give you all the glory and all the honor and all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Before I close, if there's anyone listening to me today that you do not know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, this is your time. This is your day. I wouldn't live another night or another day without Jesus. And you don't have to. Right now, you can confess Jesus as the Lord of your life and believe in your heart and he'll come into your heart and be your Savior and your Lord. The Bible says that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, you'd be saved. For with the heart, man believes unto righteousness and with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, shall be saved. And you are a precious whosoever. You've not been big enough nor bad enough to sin past the reach of God's grace to save you. Just humble yourself right now and pray this prayer with me and believe it with your heart. I can't pray it for you and I can't believe it for you. I can lead you, but you've got to pray out of your heart and you've got to believe it with your heart. Pray with me now. Say, Jesus, I ask you to forgive me for all my sins and to come into my heart and my life and be my Savior and my Lord. I believe that you died for me and rose again to give me eternal life. So at this moment, by faith, I confess you, Jesus, as the Lord of my life. And I believe with my heart that I'm forgiven. I'm saved. I'm a born again child of God. And I'm now on my way to heaven in Jesus name. Thank you, Jesus for saving my soul. Amen and amen. If you prayed that prayer and you meant it, you believe it with your heart, you're forgiven. You're saved. You are now a born again child of God on your way to heaven. God bless you. I want to encourage all of you, keep the faith. 
Be strong. Keep the right mentality. Don't think you're a victim. Know that you're a victor. Don't think that you're an undergoer. Know that you're an overcomer. You're the head, not the tail. You're above only and not beneath. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Remember that. You stand strong in the faith. Walk in love. God's with you all the way to the end of the world. He said he would never leave you nor forsake you. The Lord bless us and keep us. The Lord make his face shine upon us and be gracious to us. The Lord lift his countenance upon us and give us peace in the name of Jesus. By faith, I bless us and apply the blood of Jesus over us all. And the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with us all. Amen and amen. God bless you. We love you.